crack myself up. I still haven't found my first Blanton's. <laughs> That's different. I really like that. They're like together, like peas and carrots. That's funny. Sometimes accidents are good things. Peshods or pechods or pechaw. <laughs> this is not what I expected. <laughs> <laughs>
18% rye, which is a little on the high side of rye, or low side of high rye. Malted barley, 8%. Then the second mash bill is 42% of their three-year high rye, which is corn at 60%, rye at 36%, malted barley at 4%, and 40% of their source distillate, which is a 13-year bourbon with the mash bill of corn, 74%, rye, 18%. Again, it's a lot of rye in this one. Malted barley, 8% mash bill. So there's no wheat in this one. The first two had wheat, this one does not. All right. I'm almost, I'm not gonna put this back on, I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to get it open again. I don't remember what year number three came out, but it had to have been 2020 or 2021. I don't know how many releases there are per year on this. But like I said, they're up to Discovery 9 now. I have not personally seen a Discovery 9. I've seen Discovery 8s, or uh, Fusion 8s. I have not seen a Fusion 9 myself. So, but that doesn't mean that they're not out there. They've got to be out there, because they're ending the series. <laughs> so, it's got to be out there. All right. So far, so good on the stream. I did a little testing. Things seem to be working swimmingly. All right, let's see. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't write down any notes on this. They have them on the Bardstown website, but I did not look at them. I didn't write them down. So everything that you're gonna get is my notes off of a fresh crack. Ooh, that's really nice. It's got a sweetness to it. Nice, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm getting, uh, probably the first thing is gonna be a, a fruit. Oh, by the way, happy Labor Day, everybody. You don't have to do this at home. I am a professional. <laughs> but please do it at home. <laughs> All right. Definitely some vanilla notes on there. Uh, again, something that's fruit forward. I can't pick it out. First thing that comes to me is a citrus, but I, I don't know. It's really, really a nice nose. Some, um, some nice, very light caramels, not a dark caramel at all. I'm not getting a lot of cinnamon. I'm looking for it. That might be black cherry. I'm going to lean towards that direction. All right. Let's see if the palate is as good as the nose. <laughs> Very nice mouthfeel. It's got a silkiness to it. I like that. Hardly any bloom at all. There's a little bit on the sides of my tongue now in the finish, but as far as the bloom on my tongue, there's not much there. This is uh, where on the proof point? 98.9. Yeah. So I would have expected this to be a little hotter, especially with all that rye. The one mash bill is 18%. The second mash bill is 36%. Third mash bill is 18%, but there's a lot of corn in this too. 74%, 60%, and 74%. So maybe that's knocking that, that rye spice down, but for almost 100 proof, I'd expected a little bit more of a bloom on the mouth, and I didn't get that. That being said, the mouth feels very nice. It's got a, it's got a really nice balanced viscosity to it. Uh, it's not thin at all, even off a fresh crack. Hey, Brad. How are you, sir? Glad you're with us. Doing the Bargetown Fusion. This is number three. This has been out... This, is, this, is, this has been a while ago. I have really fallen behind on, uh, on purchasing the newer stuff. But uh, this is Fusion 3. We're, we're starting our, 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 se our series on the Bargetown stuff. We've got uh, the uh, Discovery here. And uh, this is the... Um, The Piper, Pi, Piper Pavit Reserve. It's a wine cask. 
And then uh, the last one I have here is the, uh, the Prisoner, which is another wine cask out of uh, California, I believe. So we'll be getting into these this month in September and, uh, and walking you through what they do in their different series from Bardstown. All right, let's get back into this one. This is Fusion number three. It's really nice. Very buttery mouthfeel. Um, right across the palate at the very first, and now just a little bit on the finish, there's just that slight, very so slight grass note. It's almost hidden. You have to look for it. But that rye, that, that slight grass that you can get from the rye, occasionally, I found it right when I was taking it in and right after I dropped it and now it's gone again. Um, I won't tell you the finish is particularly long. It's not particularly short though either. I still have a little bit there. Um, yeah, no, I, the mouthfeel on this is probably its crowning achievement. It really has a great feel. Um, just a very silky. It's very, very nice. The flavors are good. I'm not saying they're overwhelming, but it's a really nice blend. They've picked a great blend here. The flavors are really quite nice. I know, I'm saying nice a lot, but that's what it is. Sometimes you just got to call it what it is, and it's nice. It's a nice pour. <laughs> All right. Okay, the bloom is the, the roof of my mouth. Clear in the back. Way back here. And a little bit on the tip of my tongue. Uh, the nose is about the same as the palate. Um, really nice fruit notes. I'm going to say black cherry. But there is a little citrus in it, too. A um, little bloom on the side of my tongue there in the finish. Um, just, just a nice blend of flavors. Just a very, very nice pour. Nice. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's so nice. Isn't that nice? <laughs> George Carlin used to talk about that word. He's so nice. Isn't that nice? He'd go, boom. Stuff. <laughs> All right. All right, let me see if I can get you some more flavor here. What, what, am, I, what am I getting here? As it opens up, even in the glass, the spice of that rye is coming out a little bit. The viscosity is growing. So is the bloom. That's my fourth tip on this one. And it's, I'm getting more flavor out of it now that it's set there. But that's what happens when you drink it right off the neck. Sometimes it'll open up as you're drinking it. And this one is opening up. Really nice caramel notes. They're, I didn't get cinnamon necessarily on the nose, but I'm getting it on the palate. Um, Black cherry, still some citrus somewhere. There's a there's a there's a honey component, particularly in the finish. Nice, it's it's very it's not an overly sweet pour, but for pours, this is a little on the sweet side, and I actually rather like that. Yeah, you know, if you're a Buffalo Trace fan, a Michter's fan, you like those sweeter side pours. This uh, surprisingly is there, considering that high rye that's in here. Yes, it's high corn too, but that high rye. I wouldn't have expected this to be such a nice, silky sipper with such sweet notes, but it is. And it's, um, it's delightful, really. All right. Let's do some water. I, this is the only bottle I have of this, so I'm, I'm not going to let myself go too awful crazy. I may want to share this with somebody else because it's quite good. It's not in my top 25 or anything, but... I, among the pours I've tried this year, this is up there. I, I do like this. This is a nice one. Uh, not like last week. Caribou Crossing last week. I talked to some people who watched that one. It's funny. 
they watch that one and they go, I still want that belt. <laughs> I get it. I get it. It's a nice bottle. <laughs> I mean, the packaging is really cool on it. Luminescent and golden caribou on top, and it's pretty. It's a, it's a cool bottle. It's got the little bag, you know, the little silk or whatever bag, like Blanton's does. Okay, velvet maybe. I don't know what the heck it is, but still. Yeah, okay. If you want it for the bottle, get it for the bottle, but don't get it for the juice because it ain't worth it. The juice ain't worth the squeeze. And if you pay 50 bucks for it, MSRP, that's all you should pay for it. Don't pay extra on the secondary market because it is just not worth it. That's the Caribou Crossing from last week. That's not this one. This one's good. This one's The Fusion series, as I understand it, is pretty much on the shelf like all the time. The Discovery series is when things start to get a little more pricey, and there's other ones out there now. The Their collaboration series is crazy. They've got one with West Virginia Barrel Company. They've got one, uh, 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 Foursquare. I mean, they, they're just, they're continuing to come out with more and more interesting products. And, I mean, they put them out and then they're gone. They're not going to continue to do them. They're, they're, this is a it's supposed to be an ever-evolving thing that Bargetown does. So it makes you want to collect the bottles. And some of the bottles are a little pricey. Discovery's a little pricey. The, the one that they have with the West Virginia Barrel Company is, is pricey. Foursquare's pricey. All these are over $100 a bottle. And then some. So, you know, Fusion was the, I think, the lowest price of all of them that I have in my four-bottle collection. Would I like to get more? Yeah, yeah. Especially after sipping on this one. This one's actually very nice. Very good pour. Uh, I'm going to have trouble staying out of this one because I do like this one. All right, so here it is on water. Let's see what it does now. It added to the bloom. There's a little more burning going on. It is opening up in the bottle because the cork's off. But that did open it up a little bit. Definitely more bloom on the tongue, which is nice. Um, it didn't really change the mouthfeel much. It might have made it just a little bit more buttery, uh, but not much. It was pretty nice when it first began, right off the right off the neck. Neat. Um, but it, yeah, it grew it a little bit. It did open up the flavors a little bit more. Um, honey is definitely on top, along with that caramel. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, it, it kind of pulled the black cherry away, which is fine. The honey is nice. The caramel's nice. Vanilla's nice. Nice! <laughs> it's so nice! <laughs> I can crack myself up. I do it all the time. If you are my age and you can still make faces in the mirror and enjoy it, <laughs> that just tells you you're done. You're never going to get any more mature than you are right now in this moment. I hope when I'm 85 years old, if I'm blessed to live that long, if I'm 85 years old and I'm standing in my nursing home bathroom making faces in the mirror, I hope I giggle. <laughs> I hope I'm still that simple-minded that I can enjoy something so silly and so simple as to making faces in the mirror. <laughs> Good, clean fun, right? All right. Hmm. That was interesting. There was a flavor that I've been trying to identify and I haven't been able to find it. And it just hit me. On that last sip, I got the f just a hint, but it was there and it was present, of rose petals. Now, there's a, a gin that uh, Hendrix puts out called Midsummer. Midsummer Solstice. Midsummer Solstice. It, to me, tasted like rose petals. Quite good. Different for gin. Very different. <laughs> I don't know if there's ever been a time that I've gotten rose petals on a bourbon. But this time I did. Just a little bit. And as fast as it came, it went away. That was cool. All right. Now we do the gorgeous ice sphere. 
So I, I will be honest with you, and this is a recycled Gorgeous Ice Sphere. Um, I used it before, and then I put it in that paper sack that I was telling you about from OHLQ, the thick one, the big one. And I wrapped it up real good, and by golly, it came out of the bag just as gorgeous as it is right here. Clear, no frost on it at all. So, hey Bill, how are you, sir? So that's a little pro tip I picked up by, from somebody else, another bourbon drinker, who told me, keep those bags and keep your ice in those bags, and they will stay gorgeous. And <laughs> that guy was right. He was right. You put them in a baggie, they're going to end up with frost all over them, and they're no gorgeous, no gorgeous. But you put them in that OHLQ bag, again, not the little one, but the big one that you can put like two great big half-gallon bottles in. That one, because it's thicker paper. Put it in there, and your ice spheres will be as gorgeous as mine. <laughs> All right, see if I'm missing. Oh, I'm missing. I'm missing some stuff. Uh, all right, Homer's watching. Hey, Homer, and Bill, and Ken, Brad. Glad you're all here. We're doing, uh, I, I know I'm being repetitive, but this is the Fusion series from Bardstown. This one happens to be number three. Uh, and uh, now we're going to do some ice. And I had the dickens of a time getting this cork off. I'm telling you what, that was... That was work. And my finger stirrer has been approved by another bourbon steward, so away we go. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Paul's not with us tonight. It's Labor Day. I imagine he's having a pour of his own. Get it nice and cold. This ice sphere is about to the point where I've got to go ahead and replace it. It's a little on the small side now. All right. Okay. Hey, Nate. How are you, sir? Okay. I don't like ice on my bourbon most of the time. It mutes the flavors. It, it pulls a lot of what's in that bottle away from me. So... What I look for on ice is, did it hold up? I'm not expecting any bloom. I'm not expecting that al alcohol burn. Am I still getting flavors off of it? Or did it completely fall apart? In this case, there's still some nice flavor on it. The, there's no bloom. Um, the flavors are muted. Harder to pick things out. But the predominant flavors of caramel and honey are still there. Uh, so could it hold up in a, in a cocktail? Yes. Would I ever use it in a cocktail? No. <laughs> I get the chance to talk to a lot of bourbon drinkers. And a lot of them mix. A lot of them mix. Oh, you put this with this, it tastes like a Dr. Pepper. Oh, you put this with this, it's really, really good. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, okay, I mix sometimes, too. I'll make an old-fashioned, I'll make a Sazerac. I, there's one I did, I was, I was just experimenting, and I tried with uh, bourbon and cognac. That was actually pretty good. Uh, there's the bourbon and wine, which is the New York Sour, whiskey sour. I mean, you can do all that stuff, it's fine. There are certain whiskeys I like just the way they are, and this is going to be one of those. I, I would not use this because it's, again, it's unusual, it's a limited edition, and it's really, really good neat. So would I use this in a cocktail? No. <laughs> I'm too stingy for that. I'll, I'll use something I can get every day like Bullet or Rittenhouse or, or Old Granddad, which I was drinking the Old Granddad, uh, Old Granddad Bonded last week, and holy cow, that's a just a really great pour for like under 30 bucks. All the flavors that you want are there. Okay, let's finish this up. Still got some flavor. Again, I'm not a big fan of putting my bourbon on ice, but but that's that it held up well enough that if you are an ice drinker for whatever reason, if you if you like it to be diluted or uh, you want it to be cold because it's summertime and you still want your bourbon, but it's summertime, so you want it on ice. I get it. I totally get it. Nothing wrong with that. And this will hold up. Now, can you get this one? No. <laughs> this is this is number three. And once it once this ran out, 
uh, it was gone. That's the thing about this series is they would do series two, then they'd sell it out. Then they'd do series three, then they'd sell it out. Series four, now they're on series nine. And once it's sold out, that's the end of the Fusion series. That's it. They're doing so many other things that they don't need to keep going back to the same draw, drawing board. Right? The Fusion series is going to run its... Now, unless they start a new series with a new mash, series of mash bills and a new, a new pour. I mean, you don't know what they're going to do. But in this line... This is going to be it for this particular bottle. Okay, so the cork goes back on. I hope I can get it back. I hope I can get it on. <laughs> hope I can get it back off. Good, good night, that's tight. Okay, and I think it was a synthetic cork too, so what up? <laughs> Next week, we're going to get back into this series. This was the Diffusion. Uh, next week, we're going to do the, the uh, Discovery series. We're going to talk about what makes it special, what's in this bottle. This also happens to be the series number three, and I think they're up to series nine or even ten on this now. I haven't seen anything past eight, but I think they're up to nine or ten. This one, this one is uh, three. Tell, I, I bought them all over time, and I just haven't opened them. So the Discovery is next week on beautiful bourbon. So thank you for watching. Uh, we'll put this on YouTube tonight. So if you miss some of it, it'll be up. It'll of course stay on Facebook too. So if you want to watch it back on Facebook, our feed seems to look good tonight, which is nice. Uh, I made some changes, made some fixes and sure enough, uh, no problems from the old, uh, computer tonight. I was actually looking at going up to to the to the mall and buying a new computer. I don't want to do that. I just don't want to do that. I just this is supposed to be for fun. It's not supposed to cost me a bunch of money other than what I'm paying for bourbon. <laughs> so, all right, gang. Well, again, I say thank you and uh, thanks for watching and thanks for being with us. Make sure I'm not missing anything else. Ross is watching. Quinn is watching. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? We're just getting done. So, maybe I'll see y'all this week uh, out on the search. And in the meantime, you guys have a great what's left of your week. Well, it's the beginning of the week. Have a great week. <laughs> Enjoy tomorrow getting back to work. Uh, I know. <laughs> and we will see you next Monday.